everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm actually getting started here the night before Thanksgiving with a little bit of prep work. And the reason for that is because I have a weird craving for some traditional Norwegian lefse. It is basically a potato-based flatbread treat snack. I guess that's the best way to explain it. I'm half Norwegian and half Italian. Just so you guys know, maybe that makes a little more sense why I like the Disney movie Frozen so much, or why my two favorite foods are potato-based foods and pizza pasta. It all makes sense now, right? All right. <laughs> Every Thanksgiving since I can remember back as far as when I was five or six years old, my grandma, God rest her soul, used to make us lefse for Thanksgiving, and now my Aunt Terry makes it. Um, it's been a while since I've had it, since I've been away so long, and I just have that craving. I want to attempt to make it myself from scratch. So this is not a recipe video. I'm just going to show you some of the steps involved in trying to attempt to make this for the first time. So I've got some potatoes here, some all-purpose flour, and some heavy cream, and some cinnamon sugar mix. And so I'm going to start with the potatoes, because once I get those peeled and boiled for the night, they need to sit in the fridge overnight, so we'll get back at this tomorrow, but we'll start tonight. So at this point it almost looks like a runny, yellowy, mashed potato looking thing. Um, the directions say to put it in the fridge overnight or for 8 hours. So let this cool down a little bit, put the top on it, put the fridge, and I will cut back in tomorrow for Thanksgiving when we get this turkey in the oven. Well good morning and happy Thanksgiving everybody. It's uh, a little cloudy this early morning here at about 8 a.m. but the sun is going to come out later. And uh, my, my plan today is to go back in the RV, uh, finish up the next step of the lefse, and then we're gonna go have some fun this morning, and then come back to the RV and start the turkey and mashed potatoes and the rest of the, the good food. I'm gonna have a lot of leftovers, that's okay. But uh, let's get started on this and then we'll hit the road. Okay, I need some more practice. Clearly there is an art to this and um, I need to get them thinner and I need to put down more flour. Uh, but at this point, maybe it would just be easier to drive back home and have Aunt Terry make them. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm trying. I called her on the phone and got some tips uh, for next time we try this, but uh, I'm gonna just try to get a few of these to work. Oh my gosh, while I had the camera off, I set off the smoke detector in here. This has just been a nightmare. Oh my goodness. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I don't even know if I want to show you this. Um, out of that whole batch, six potatoes and all that work and everything, my yield is three potato flatbreads. I have three of these and they look horrible. They smell good. It smells like this awesome potato-y thing. So anyway, mission accomplished, kind of. Yeah, so this is where there's some flexibility in how you want to prepare these a lot of different ways. 
uh, the way we were taught to do it is just to uh, smother it with butter, and I mean get a get a really good layer of butter on there, and then go with some of this cinnamon sugar topper, and give it a good topping of that cinnamon sugar. Coat it really well. Okay, all of a sudden, I think that's left so. <laughs> then we'll roll it up. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a potato lefsa. I'm not going to wait to dinner to eat these three that I'll have. I'm just going to do a little morning snack here. Such a weird food. Yeah, I call that a win, even though it was a terrible fail and I'm going to be cleaning up for the next half hour. But anyway, and to think I'm going to tackle the turkey later in here. Uh, we'll get to that later. So I'll cut back in here uh, when we hit the road. So it was just a quick, easy three mile trip from Walmart over here to the Habitat for Humanity Global Village and Discovery Center. Unless the Lord builds the house, it's builders labor in vain. Should we check it out? Well, it's $4 to get in, and the really nice gal in here said that this place is pet friendly, both indoors and outdoors, so I gotta go get Jax. I gotta bring him. Jax, man, do you wanna go explore the world in recreation form? Yeah, you wanna? Let's go. Yeah, we love these pet friendly facilities around the country. So I'm inside the little orientation building here, which gives you a little bit of information about what Habitat for Humanity does around the country. Uh, there's a short film, a little 10 minute film that gives you a little bit of brief history on what they do for other countries. And then over here, this is a picture of uh, South Africa here. Uh, people living in poverty on the river in the slums. And so we're gonna take a little tour out here and look at some of the, the recreations of what people are living like uh, in poverty, as well as a little more history for what hum Habitat for Humanity does to help people in their situation. So we'll go take a look and go aside. Being a good boy? Okay. Jax, there's more kitties here. Did you know there's more kitties here? Hi, kitty. He's like, no, I'm not messing with your cat. That thing's huge. Aw, everybody came to greet you, Jax. All of these cats have never seen a cat as big as you. Meow. Meow. By the way, before we get started, uh, there are over 1 billion people living in poverty or in slums like this worldwide. That's a lot of people that live this way. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of recreations in here of all the different ways that some people are forced to live around the country in poverty. And it's worth noting, you know, this is not done by choice, like comparing this to a place like Slab City in America where people come out there because there's no rules or laws or whatever they say and you can build whatever you want. That's much different. These, these are people who for the most part work for a living but don't make enough money to be able to afford a, a big house. So that's why they live like this, you know, because they have no option. A little plaque here that says, notice the hanging light bulb in this dwelling. There is no electricity, but the bulb symbolizes hope for a better life. It feels very emotional and real walking through here. Jax, look at the chickens in there. There's chickens in there. Is that a rock, rock, rock cat? No? Hi guys. People all over the world have learned to just be happy with what they got. And that's a good message in a time where, you know, we as Americans are celebrating Thanksgiving today, uh, learning to be grateful for what we have. And I truly am. Uh, I'm grateful for the, everything Jax and I get to experience and explore on the road and that we have a safe roof over our head with an RV that's dependable now. Not sure if you can tell, but the roof is really collapsed over there. What? Hi, kitties. Oh, I believe this is a church, a chapel. Another plaque here says, with hundreds if not thousands of people living in a settlement such as this, it grows into a community, complete with churches, stores, food stalls, haircutting shops, and entertainment spots.
People who would live like this must be lazy. They must not want to work to better themselves. Do you find yourself thinking that? The reserve usually is true. Families often find themselves in such settlements only because they have come from rural areas to the city, hoping and praying to find paying jobs. Redvid or kissing bugs, live in the walls and cracks of houses in South and Central America. By depositing feces on a person's skin, the kissing bug transmits a deadly disease known as Chagas. A family might land in a settlement like this expecting it to be temporary, only to find multiple economic and administrative barriers. And now we get to the worlds where Habitat Humanity has, has helped other countries and other people living in poverty. So I'm not going to show you every single house here uh, in, the, in their section of where they build the houses. You guys just got to come check it out for yourself because I don't want this video to get too long. I'm starving and I want to get some turkey in my belly. I've got a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, today was just maybe a weird day to visit a place like this. Uh, it makes me really happy for what I have, 100%. I just can't say that enough. Life is actually pretty good, you know? I love my home. I'm houseless, but not homeless. And I love my RV. I love traveling and exploring and seeing the different ways there are to live. Uh, I think Jackson and I have it pretty good. And I, I may seem like I complain a lot, um, but I'm just sharing the challenges that we have. Certainly, my challenges on the road with this lifestyle are much, much different than some of the challenges of people living in poverty around the world. But still, Jax, are you thankful that you have a stroller? This, this kitty right here doesn't have a stroller. Are you happy this Thanksgiving? Mm. Pretty happy? Yeah? Okay. So I'll put some GPS coordinates below in the video description, guys. And we're going to drive the RV back to Walmart. So I'm here at Walmart, obviously. And I got cold feet with doing the turkey, guys. Just, just going to be honest with you. At the last second, even though it's already in the fridge and everything thawed, ready to go. Uh, I did this last year. Cooked a turkey in my RV oven. And I just, for the, la and at the last minute, didn't feel like doing it. I was looking for more. Not that, like, the left of thing deterred me or anything. It's just, I don't know. I just feel like, let's just relax a little more. Um, so I went back into Walmart. And for $8.51, I got a Genio. How much is this? 2.35 pounds. It's just a boneless turkey breast. And it's already pre-cooked, right? Pre-cooked? Yes. It's already pre-cooked. All I got to do is heat it up. So we'll pre-heat the oven to 375 and it's going to take about an hour and 40 minutes to cook this to 165 degrees. And then just cut it up, do my mashed potatoes and gravy, got my Hawaiian rolls, got my Walmart apple pie ready to go. I mean, I just baked this apple pie. So I'll cut back in around dinner time, guys. All right, everything's done here. Turkey's up to temperature. Mashed potatoes are done. And gravy's almost ready. I'm gonna cut this up. Not bad if I don't say so myself. And I'm gonna say so myself. Who says you can't have an awesome Thanksgiving in an RV in a Walmart parking lot? That's right. There you go, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, it turned out to be a nice day with the sun and everything. I'm not double fisting it here. It's just this one's almost empty, so I got another one backed up, just so you know. Um, unfortunately, I haven't still really decided where we're going to go from here. So, hey, you have your own. You have your own. So, uh, bear with me, guys. Obviously, it'll all become clear to you as I start driving one direction or the other. I mean, I've only got four options, so uh, we'll figure something out, but... Um, just gonna relax and then clean up, of course. And now that Thanksgiving is here, I feel like it's not too early for Christmas. So we made it here. Now I don't feel a little awkward about my Christmas tree and my Christmas lights and everything. So I feel normal about that. I am a little stuffed, but I had to save room for the apple pie. Of course, just had to. I'm going to find a way to enjoy this pie now and I'm going to start back up Stranger Things Season 2, Episode 3.
I'm all cleaned up in there, guys. So just wanted to say uh, thanks for hanging out with Jax and I on the day after Thanksgiving. So it's Black Friday for you all. And uh, we'll get back on the road and uh, start the next leg of this awesome journey that Jax and I call life. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.